Nearly 15,000 students graduate with gender and cultural studies degrees each year. 15,000 innocent young people conned out of their money and left for brain dead. It's a national disgrace. What happens to a young person who has suffered this fate? It's more than likely he or she or they or it or whatever the poor slob has been taught to call himself goes on to commit the same terrible crime against others that has been committed against him or it or whatevs by writing gender study or cultural study articles in peer-reviewed journals. Our crack team of hard-working researchers managed to unearth some of these articles by taking time out during the cutscenes of Ratchet and Clank to read a piece by Elizabeth Harrington of FreeBeacon.com. All articles and quotes are non-made up. A peer-reviewed article published last year in Progress in Human Geology was entitled Glaciers, Gender, and Science a feminist glaciology framework for global environmental change research. The article says that while glaciers are, quote, key icons of climate change, the relationships among gender, science, and glaciers remain understudied. This paper proposes a feminist glaciology leading to more just and equitable human ice interactions, unquote. To be fair, this article did improve my personal relationship with ice by causing me to pour a large dollop of whiskey over it. Another article from Dance Research Journal is called The Pilates Pelvis, Racial Implications of the Immobile Hips. This article, quote, examines the treatment of the pelvis in the Pilates exercises, single leg stretch and leg circles, which reinforce behaviors of a racially white aesthetic, unquote. In order to personally check this assertion, I watched dozens of videos of scantily clad women stretching their sleek, well-toned legs open and closed and up. What was I talking about? Oh, yes. Another example of the tragic detritus left behind by the minds of gender and cultural studies students comes from a publication called Men and Masculinities, which features articles by people who seem never to have experienced either. One article puts forward the theory that the condition known as impotence or erectile dysfunction is a fiction meant to reinforce, quote, dominant phallocratic notions of healthy male heterosexuality, unquote. The author asserts that by using feminist analysis, she will eliminate the perceived need for an erection. I can personally testify that that works like a charm. And finally, from the journal SSRN comes the article, The Lactating Man, which says, quote, lactation and breastfeeding are typically viewed as inherently female activities. This article questions this gender normativity of milk and argues that male lactation blurs the distinction between male and female, as well as perhaps between humans and animals, unquote. Police are still hunting for the author of this article to make sure she doesn't go anywhere near children, or men, or cows. I think these sad documents prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that gender and cultural studies are among the leading causes of ignorance, stupidity, and madness. I would call for their complete abolition, but I need the laughs. Trigger warning, I'm Andrew Claven, and this is The Andrew Claven Show.